Soon we shall celebrate the birth of Jesus. We worship God with joy in our hearts as we're reminded of the words the angel said on that first Christmas day. Behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which shall come to all the people. The scripture comes from John 15, verses 9 through 11. I love you just as the Father loves me. Remain in my life. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love in the same way that I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. We light this candle to proclaim the coming of the light of God into our darkness. With the coming of this light, there is joy, joy that is ours not only at Christmas, but always. Let us pray. Oh Lord, as Christmas draws near, there's a sense of excitement in the air. We can feel a joy in our lives and see it in those around us. Still, for some of us, this is a sad time because of unhappy things that have happened in our lives. Help us to have the joy that does not depend upon earthly happiness, but upon you. Help us to be filled with your joy so that we may share it with a joyous world. In Christ's name, amen. Our hymn is 158. Angels we have heard on high.
Our gracious Lord Jesus Christ offers this invitation to all who have sinned. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us now join in prayer asking God to forgive us our sins. O God of the future, in the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, you are coming in power to bring all nations under your rule. We confess that we have not expected your kingdom, for we live casual lives, ignoring your promised judgment. We refuse your justice and peace for our discipleship reflects too often discomfort with people who are different, or we are too busy to stop to become involved, and we miss your presence in the hurts of others. In your mercy, forgive us. May the power of the Christ child cleanse us and rule in our hearts and actions, that we indeed may serve as forgiven sinners in your kingdom, as those who herald Christ's birth. Amen. And now let us individually and silently confess our personal sins to God. Amen. Dear friends, hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross that we might be dead to sin and be alive to all that is good. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. May be seated. This morning, as the session met, it was our privilege to receive into the life and fellowship of First Presbyterian Church these following individuals who are coming forward. To my far left and to your right, this is Jane Ballard, and the elder sponsor is Dr. Alan Barwick. And Jane is received by transfer of letter from an area Methodist church. To my immediate left, to your right, are Mr. and Mrs. Bill Alexander, Bill and Sheila, and their two sons, George and Thomas. Their elder sponsor is David Permar. And Bill and Sheila are received by transfer of letter from the First Presbyterian Church of Kannapolis, uh, North Carolina. So we welcome these individuals, these new members, who are to be received publicly at this service of worship. We welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. You have been received into the membership of the church, and as we do so, we symbolize the unity of the body of Christ. And because of this, you did not come to us as a stranger but as a brother and sisters in the Lord. And we welcome you to the worship of this people of faith here at First Presbyterian Church. The sense of the unity of the body of Christ is reflected by Paul in his epistle to the Ephesians when he writes in the fourth chapter, there is one body and one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all who is above all and through all and in all. I address this question to you. Do you promise to be a faithful member of this congregation, giving of yourself in every way, and by so doing, fulfilling your calling as a disciple of Jesus Christ the Lord? Will you answer, I do? Thank you. Let us pray together. O oh God, our Father, we praise you for calling us to be a servant people and for gathering us into the body of Jesus Christ. 
And we thank you for choosing to add to our number these persons in the faith. Together may we live in your spirit and so love one another that we may have the mind of Jesus Christ our Lord to whom we give honor and glory forever. Amen. As Jim Eller is presenting to our new members their certificates, we invite you to come forward at the close of the service to extend a right hand of fellowship to our new members. Please uh, introduce yourself to Alan Barwick, the elder sponsor, and to David Pomar, the elder sponsor, so they in turn will be able to introduce you to our new members. And we welcome you to the worship and work of this people of faith here at First Presbyterian Church on this Sunday in Advent. Thank you. <coughs> Good morning and welcome to worship at First Presbyterian. I invite you to reach for one of the friendship pads, the registers on the center aisle so that we may reflect the oneness of the body of Christ as we gather for worship on this uh, beautiful Sunday in Advent. For those of you who are guests and visitors, we invite you to stay for a few minutes at the close of the service for coffee and fellowship in the Balkan Parlor. This is a room to my right, to your left as you would exit the sanctuary. And the pastors, after we greet at the doors, will go to that room, and we look forward to greeting you. As we look out over the congregation, we do have many guests and visitors with us this Sunday. I would invite you to reach for a card in front of you, which has a red ribbon on it. And if you're so inclined, please put that ribbon on so that worshipers here this Sunday are sitting in front of you or behind you, who are members, may extend to you a most cordial welcome and identify you as guests here this Sunday morning. A special welcome, uh, and uh, as always, to those of you who worship with us by way of WYED TV. We are First Presbyterian Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. We are located across the street from the Capitol, and we're thankful for your participation in this service of worship on this Sunday in Advent. We're thankful for your prayers and for your contributions, financial contributions, which make this special ministry possible. As the friendship pad is being passed along the pew, you will notice if you are a guest or visitor that there's a place to check if you desire information about the church, so please feel inclined to do that if you would like information. And if you're interested in pursuing membership here at First Presbyterian Church, talking with uh, the staff or offices, there is an elder present each Sunday in the Anderson Session Room to my right who is prepared to talk with you about how one becomes a member of the Presbyterian Church through this congregation by transfer of letter, by reaffirmation of faith, or by profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior. I call to your attention the announcements as are printed uh, in the worship bulletin. Tomorrow evening is the men and women of the church uh, special Christmas program and supper. Dr. Garrett Briggs is the speaker. This Sunday we receive the special offering, the Christmas offering, which is received by millions of Presbyterians throughout our denomination, the joy gift. There's a bulletin and an insert. 60% of the offering goes for retired servants of the church, uh, many of whom are really senior citizens uh, who have given years and years of their life in service to the Presbyterian Church. 40% goes for scholarships to students at seven mission colleges or schools related to the Presbyterian Church, some as far away as Alaska or out west. There is one such mission college here in North Carolina. This offering will be received uh, this Sunday and next as well. This Sunday evening, excuse me, this uh, Christmas Eve evening, we shall have three worship services. A new one has been added, uh, one at 5 o'clock in Memorial Hall, and this is one for families with small children, particularly those with preschool children, perhaps through the first grade. And this is a judgment call on parents with small children. That's a 35-minute service which will be held in Memorial Hall, and if you're a guest or visitor, that is the building to my far right. You go as far as you can go, and you're at Memorial Hall. Refreshments will be served following that uh, 5 o'clock service. The traditional uh, lessons and carol service with candlelight will be at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary with the choirs participating. And then 11 o'clock will be a service of worship with communion with candlelight as well. 
So we invite you to the three uh, Christmas Eve services of this Christmas Eve here at First Presbyterian Church. <coughs> Next Sunday in worship, we shall be honoring individuals who have given of their life of service to the Presbyterian Church as elders and deacons, and they will be honored on behalf of the church at large as elder emeritus and deacon emeritus and this 11 o'clock service uh, next Sunday. And at the close of the service, are you invited uh, to sign up for our new pictorial directory? And the sign up uh, area is right next to the library, again to my right, to your left. This morning at the 8.30 worship service, it was our privilege uh, to receive into the life and membership of uh, fellowship of this congregation, Mr. John Faust was received by transfer of letter from an area Presbyterian church. And then uh, this is the celebration of the birth of Jesus, and this church has been privileged over the years to be in partnership with Halifax Daycare Center as a special ministry through this church and the Presbyterian Urban Council, an opportunity for us to provide a scholarship, and that is done through members of our church making a gift to the church of 10 cents for every year. And so I wrote a check for $5.60 this uh, September, so you can figure out how old that is. And uh, we invite you to do the same, an opportunity to share uh, the gift of, uh, of a scholarship as we remember the birth of our Savior and our own births as we provide this needed scholarship at Halifax Daycare Center. It's good for us to be in worship on this Sunday morning, an opportunity for us to grow in faith and service as we journey as pilgrims to Bethlehem to honor and to celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Before we continue in worship, I have one announcement I need to make. It's here, the cookbook. This is the church's cookbook called Choice Food from First Church. Uh, I need to let you know that it's on sale several places in the church, and it's $8. It's been a Herculean profit progress, a project, what do you want to call it? I'm too tired to even think right now. Um, we have a lot of these already sold. We do ask that those of you who have already bought these not read them during the worship service today. Um, but we are awfully proud of it. Uh, it involves several people, the people like yourselves who've submitted recipes, the people that have put it together, and the people who have been binding it, and that was the youth this morning as well as recently. We do indeed want you to take a look at this, uh, and the youth will benefit from this as far as an activity assistance fund to help us afford our trips that we take for different programs and projects. So it's an involved project, but we're very grateful for all your patience, and the cookbook is here. We hope to have all the rest of them bound by tomorrow night's Presbyterian Men and Women Dinner. Comments over. <clears throat> our scripture is a reading from the servant passages of Isaiah, the 61st chapter, verses 1 through 4, and then 8 through 11. Here now, God's word. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastation of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be like among the nations, and their offsprings among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with garland, and a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. May God add understanding and blessing to this reading of this holy word. We continue our reading from Scripture as we read from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter beginning at verse 46, continuing through verse 56, the canticle of praise, the song of praise of Mary, after she receives the announcement that she is to be the mother of the Messiah. 
Let us hear this word of God. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. May God bless to our reading and to our understanding this passage of Scripture. The word of the Lord, thanks be unto God. At the beginning of this past week, when I submitted our musical offering for the bulletin to the front office, I wasn't sure how to entitle it, so I just called it The Cantata. And then in the middle of the week, when I got the proof back of the bulletin, I saw that there was a change in the wording, and I was pleasantly pleased with it. It entitled it The Sermon in Music. And I couldn't resist the opportunity right now to highlight this connection between the spoken word and music. You know, it's a popular and innocent, perhaps, misconception about the Christmas story that when the angels came down to announce to the shepherds that Jesus had been born, that they sang to the shepherds. But in fact, and they may have, but the Bible tells us that as it's put in the book of Luke, uh, the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. There may be cases of uh, angels singing in the Bible, but I'm not really aware of them. And I can't help but think that this is something very special, that the Lord has given us, you and me, this wonderful gift of taking the spoken word and being able to express it through music, perhaps in a way that words alone uh, can't move us. Music in which we can share and express our joys, our hopes, our sadness, and our praise. And perhaps this is why so many times in the Psalms we see this connection of song and praise together. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to God. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. And among the most famous from Psalm 150, praise the Lord. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. How especially fitting it is for us at this season to express our joy, our praise through music. For unto us a child is born.
having heard their voices and the music lifted up in God's praise, may we lift up our faithful voice and speak what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us unite our hearts and our minds in common prayer. Let us pray. O oh, holy God, at this time of Advent, we come before you as a people, once again gathering in your house of worship to give you the glory and to sing your praise. We come also to hear the story that we know so well, spoken once again, that into our world you came through the birth of Jesus Christ, that into our lives you have brought joy and gladness promise and hope to our lives you've brought meaning we come therefore thanking you for these gifts and others for indeed as a people who call themselves Christians we look around us and see the gifts you've given us and feel more than blessed we feel a little ashamed at times that we think we seem to have so many problems when as we look we see others who have worse times and days than we do help us to remember that there will always be tough times but there will also be joy that as there is difficulty, there is promise and hope. Gracious God, we thank you for the fact that you've kept us going so far, so fast, so well. Sometimes we want to do more than we already do, minister in new ways, proclaim your glory in all the ways we can. But sometimes we need to take time out to pause and reflect on what you've given us, reflect on the meaning of the time and the season, reflect on our purpose as Christians to know your love and to proclaim it to the world. Most gracious God, you have given us things that we can't begin to measure, not only life itself, but the promise of a new life in Christ. As we celebrate this season, we ask that that meaning become full and truthful to us, that in Christ and his birth and accepting him, we may have newness of life. Help us to accept that call and that command. and Give us the strength to live, knowing that we are Christians and proclaim you and your son. But gracious God, we also come before you as people who have specific wants and needs. We have concerns and prayers that we would have you here. Each of us in this place and all around the world have concerns we'd ask that you look into our lives and see, needs we'd ask you to meet. We ask that you give us strength, not only in the times of difficulty, but in the times of blessing that you keep us going from this day forward. We ask that you help us through the times when we face not only injury and illness, but also death, the times when we face crisis of spirit, doubt or faith or fear. We ask that you be with us in all those times when we feel the weakest, for indeed you promise to be strong for us. Heavenly Father, this hour we ask and Indeed, that you be with us, not just in this worship and what we say and do, but in our hearts and in our lives. Build us up that we might be the true church on earth, the body of Christ that seeks to proclaim you, not ourselves. Give this church new meaning and direction, a vision of where we are to go and whom we are to follow. For as surely as we have gathered in this place, 
We have gathered because we have one common vision, the understanding and the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that we might truly be what you've called us to be. And you've called us together always in Christ, your Son, our Savior, in whose name we make this prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this season of giving, we know we have received from God. Therefore, let us with generous hearts give back to God some of what we have received. At this time, let us receive our tithes and our offerings. Gracious God, in worship this day, we've been blessed with the gifts of music, the gift of voice, the gift of this cantata, for unto us a child is born. And as we journey to Bethlehem, may we respond with our commitment to you, with discipleship which reflects an opportunity for us to share the gospel. And thus, as we bring our offerings this day, may they be transformed into avenues of sharing the good news of the gospel in word and in deed as all of us celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. We close the service with the hymn 174, As With Gladness, Man of Old.
Go in peace and have courage. And as we journey in our spiritual pilgrimage to Bethlehem this season, may we go with expectancy, expecting the birth of joy and of hope and of salvation, a rekindling of our spirits and our resolve to serve you as disciples in word and in, and in deed. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you, both now and forevermore. Mm -hmm.